Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session of, uh, of our course. So, last class um, we have looked into the, we have started the various properties and definitions of, uh, of membrane based processes, which will be quite uh, um, uh, you know frequent, frequently will be coming across during our modeling and simulation of the processes. So, the first term that we have defined is osmotic pressure and we have seen that how osmotic pressure is defined and how uh, it will be depending on the various operating conditions. For example, the solutes uh, that we are going to separate and the concentration of the solute. We have, we have seen that solute it will be proportional to the solute concentration and, and it is inversely proportional to the molecular weight of the solutes. So, therefore, the whenever we are talking about the separation of the lower molecular weight solutes, its osmotic pressure will be very, very high. So, therefore, the operating pressure in order to overcome the osmotic pressure to in order to get a realizable permeate flux or the throughput of the process, you know, the osmotic the operating pressure will be very, very high in case of reverse osmosis, where we will be talking about the separation of the very low molecular solutes like monovalent sodium chloride that will be having a molecular weight around 58.5. On the other hand, if you really go for the larger sized solutes for example, proteins, paints, clay etcetera, which will be having very high molecular weight. The osmotic pressure requirement, osmotic pressure is negligible and therefore, the operating pressure requirement will be less. So, osmotic pressure plays a very, very important role whenever, whenever we are talking about the separation of lower size solutes for example, salts in case of desalination, in case of nano filtration etcetera. So, next property that we will be looking into is the permeability of the membrane permeability is very very important because it is directly related to the throughput of the process it physically means how porous my membrane is so if my membrane is very porous, then uh, I can I, I should have a higher permeability of the membrane. So, uh, it is it is it is directly related to the throughput of the process and how the permeable we will now we will be discussing how the permeability of the membrane is measured. Permeability of the membrane is measured in a very straightforward and simple by conducting a simple experiment. We conduct a very small laboratory experiment using the membrane and with pure distilled water. We do experiment with pure distilled water or deionized water. Why? Because distilled water will be having pure water will be having a zero osmotic pressure as we have discussed in the last class. Hence, if we can conduct experiment by if we if we measure the permeate flux at different operating transmembrane pressure drop in a small you know batch cell what is this batch cell i will be talking about the batch cell and other cells in details later on batch cell is basically a small experimental setup having three parts it is a cylindrical body followed by a housing at, at a bottom flange and it is a there is a top flange this we place the membrane and the bottom flange and then we put the top flange and then there will be they will be tightened by nuts and bolts here and then we put water let us say filling half of it and then we pressurize using an external nitrogen cylinder. We set up an operating pressure delta P 1 and then we measure the permeate flux. How will you measure the permeate flux? This permeate flux can be measured by two methods using a graduate first one is using a graduated cylinder. In a graduated cylinder you just clock how much let us say 5 ml um, how much time is required to 
to, to fill up a particular fixed amount of volume, let us say 5 ml. So, how much time is required to collect 5 ml of water and uh, so, so once so, so similarly this once you get the, get the volume of water or volume of permeate, the filtrate is known as the permeate in membrane process, volume of permeate divided by time divided by the area membrane area. this will be giving the permeate flux. So, we measured the permeate flux at different transmembrane pressure drop and then plot permeate flux. Typically, the permeate flux is denoted by a symbol V w, then we plot V w versus delta p. Now, since we are talking about water, its osmotic pressure is low. So, therefore, the permeate flux as a function of delta p will be a straight line through origin. So, we will be getting the data something like this for different pressure drop and then we fit a straight line through them through origin. The slope of this curve will be given by the permeability and permeability is typically denoted by a symbol L p. So, therefore, flux the relationship is linear flux is L p del p, the proportionality constant is permeability. So, therefore, let us look into the what is the unit of permeability, the unit of permeability will be therefore, the unit of permeate flux divided by delta p, okay. what is the permeate flux meter cube per meter square second divided by delta p is in Pascal. So, 1 meter will be cancelled out. So, it will be meter by Pascal second. So, this is the SI unit of membrane permeability. Now, by looking into the value of permeability, one can suppose you are you are um, uh, measuring you have, you have generated a membrane, you have cast a membrane and you would like to you know characterize the membrane. The first characteristic should be the membrane permeability, how porous my membrane is. By looking into the value of membrane permeability in SI unit, then one can really get an idea in which membrane you have landed into. For example, if the value of permeability is in the order of 10 to the power minus 10 meter by Pascal second, this is the, the SI unit. So, uh, meter by Pascal second, then you have landed into a microfiltration membrane, that is a general conclusion. If you are talking about a membrane which will be having a permeability in the range of let us say 4 into 10 to the power minus 11 to 9 into 10 to the power minus 11. So, that will be meter by Pascal second. So, that will be the typical range of ultrafiltration membrane. So, if you get this order of magnitude of permeability, then you have landed into an ultrafiltration membrane. Similarly, if you get a permeability of lower range of 10 to the power minus 11, let us say 1 into 10 to the power minus 11 to 3 into 10 to the power minus 11 then meter by in SI unit, then you have landed into a nano filtration membrane. If you get a permeability which will be less than 10 to the power minus 12 meter by Pascal second, then you have landed into the reverse osmosis membrane. So, by looking into the value of the permeability, one can really identify which membrane you have, uh, he, he, uh, you have generated or you have cast. So, permeability is very, very important. It is a really important parameter for modeling the system and identifying the membrane and this can be uh, measured quite easily by conducting an independent experiment as we have discussed earlier. Okay. The next important parameter is selectivity or retention. Retention or rejection sometimes it is called solute rejection or solute retention. This gives selectivity of the membrane. So, both permeability and membrane rejection are important properties. Membrane permeability in indicates how porous my membrane is, selectivity says the rejection or retention shows how selective my membrane is. So, the first one 
is related to the throughput of the process, thus this one the second one is related to the extent of separation that can be affected by this membrane. There are two types of rejection or retention we can talk about, one is the absorbed retention another is real retention. So, absorbed retention is denoted by a symbol R naught and real retention is denoted by a symbol R R. So, what is R naught? R naught is defined as 1 minus C p divided by C naught. So, what is C naught? C naught is the solute concentration in feed. What is C p? C p is the solute concentration in permeate. So, 100 percent R naught indicates complete separation. And 0 percent R naught indicates no separation, no separation of solute. Therefore, uh, the extent of solute separation can be directly obtained by re observed retention and it is a measurable quantity. One can really measure the observed retention because one can get a you know sample of the filtrate or the permeate stream can measure its concentration through any analytical instruments like refractive index, um, uh, ultraviolet UVB uh, for spectrophotometer, um, atomic absorption spectrophotometer. There are many uh, uh, you know equipments or analytical in, uh, instruments are available for measuring the concentration. So, one can take a sample of the permeate stream and can measure its concentration and C p can be determined. One can take a sample of the feed stream and can measure its concent solute concentration and can get the value of C naught. So, therefore, R naught is a measurable quantity and it, it directly indicates that how much cons you know separation of the membrane is how much separation the membrane is resulting. What is the real retention? The real retention is the actual potential of the membrane to separate. So, it is defined as 1 minus C p by C m. Now, let us define what are the C p and C m are. C p is the is having the same definition like uh, here. C p is the solute concentration in the filtrate or in the permeate stream. So, what is C m? C m is nothing but the solute concentration on the membrane surface. So, what is the difference between the uh, real retention and observed retention? I will be coming to that in a next minute. If in order to explain that, let us just look into an exploded view of whatever what is happening over the membrane surface during a separation process. So, in a membrane surface it is a pressure driven process. So, solutes will be accumulated over the membrane surface. So, there will be a gradient of solute over the membrane surface starting from concentration in the feed C naught to membrane surface concentration C m. So, concentration since by convection, since you are applying pressure into the system, by convection the solutes will be convecting towards the membrane surface, its concentration will be more at the membrane surface compared to bulk, because they are accumulating on the membrane surface. So, C m is always greater than C naught. So, what is the actual separation capability of the membrane? The actual separation capability of the membrane is the concentration that is that is available across two phases of the membrane. This is the upstream side, this is the downstream side of the membrane. In the upstream side, what is the concentration of solute? This is C m. What is the concentration of solute in the downstream or the permeate side? It is C p. So, therefore, real retention or the real capability of the membrane, real retention, retention capability of the membrane.
membrane is 1 minus C p divided by C m. So, uh, the, but there is what is the uh, difficulty in measuring it? The difficulty in measuring the real retention is that that C m is very very difficult to measure experimentally, because membrane surface concentration this is first of all this is a pressurized system. We are talking about a pressurized system. How will you measure the um, uh, surface concentration of the membrane? One, one possibility is that you release the pressure, open up the system, take a very small sample close to the membrane and measure its concentration, but it will, it will be erroneous because first of all once you are releasing the pressure, some of the solutes those have been deposited over the membrane surface, again they will be diffused back to the, to the bulk. So, that will be reducing the concentration on the, uh, on, on, on the um, membrane surface. Secondly, the, the, there will be an existence of gradient of solute from the fit to the uh, from the fit to the membrane surface and this layer is known as the concentration boundary layer or mass transfer boundary layer. And typically the, uh, the thickness of this mass transfer boundary layer will be in the order of few microns may be 10 to 10 micron 20 micron or even maybe 50 micron 120 micron something like that. Now, where the this, this actual layer is really uh, this mass transfer boundary layer is really uh, assembly really uh, existing into the system. Now, how you, if you if you take a sample very close to the membrane first of all you, you will be whenever you will be collecting a sample close to the membrane some amount of sol, you know solvent in the bulk that will also be collected. Secondly, even if you are collecting let us say 100 micron of sample from the system uh, close to the next to the uh, membrane skin, then you will be really getting an uh, average concentration. You will not be getting an idea of what is the membrane surface concentration, solute concentration over the membrane surface. So, that really is challenging and you know, the measurements of membrane surface, you know solute concentration of the membrane surface is really, really very, very challenging and it creates a problem for it, it, it creates a you know difficulty uh, from measuring it directly. So, direct measurement of real retention is very, very difficult and it is not possible. In fact, there are there is there are research going on how to do an on in situ measurement of membrane surface con solute concentration on the membrane surface, but all these experiments, all these measurements techniques, the latest development that has been obtained, that has been carried out currently, those are in a laboratory small scale with a special attachment like you know view ports or you know uh, by by by, uh, uh, by 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 doing a special measure, uh, you know arrangement for collecting samples very close to the membrane surface, but this this does not give an accurate result. So, direct measurement of real surface real retention is not possible. So, there are ways to measure the real retention or membrane estimate the membrane surface concentration indirectly. We will be, will be will be doing it later on. So, that will be uh, the difference one of the difference between the observed retention and real retention. Observed retention is a directly measurable property on the other hand real retention is not directly measurable property, it can be estimated by an indirect calculations. Second difference is that observed retention uh, is, is, is basically what is observed. Okay. On the other hand real retention in it indicates that it is the actual removal capability of the membrane towards the solute, actual selectivity of the solute um, and the membrane. So, therefore, it is assumed to be a constant and intrinsic property, it is assumed to be an intrinsic property of the membrane, to be an intrinsic property of the membrane. So, real retention is supposed to be constant for membrane for a particular membrane solute solute 
solvent system. So, therefore, if I am talking about the separation of salt using polysulfon membrane and its real retention is uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.95 let us say. Now, if I use the uh, same solute um, let us say sodium chloride in aqueous solution, you, if I would like to separate that using a different membrane of different polymer for example, cellulose acetate its real retention will be different. So, it is a constant intrinsic parameter for a particular membrane solute solvent system. So, what is the way of measurement of real retention? Real retention can be there are there are two ways one one is the um, uh, for first method of measurement of real retention is you conduct experiment in a batch cell same batch cell separately. Second by velocity variation technique, I will be coming to that later on. Now, let us look into the uh, you know batch cell experiments under high turbulent. What is this experiment? Now, there are certain conditions to control this uh, experiment uh, to conduct this experiment. These conditions are called low polarization conditions. What are the low polarization conditions? One is the low transmembrane pressure drop. low fit concentration and high turbulence. These three conditions are known as the uh, low polarization conditions. What do you mean by the low polarization condition? That I am talking about uh, if you remember the figure that I have drawn in the uh, only few minutes back that during the separation process, there will be a development of mass transfer boundary layer and there is a polarization of solutes from the fit concentration to the membrane surface concentration. Now, whenever you will be talking about low transmembrane pressure drop, then the since the operating pressure is less, the amount of convection of solutes to the membrane surface will be less. So, therefore, less solutes will be deposited over the membrane surface and the thickness of this mass transfer boundary layer will be less. Second is low fit concentration. If the fit concentration itself is less, less amount of solutes will be deposited over the membrane surface by lowering the thickness of mass transfer boundary layer. And similarly, under these conditions, if you work in low TMP and low fit concentration, now if you have high stirring or high turbulence, um, uh, typically this turbulence will be around, let us say we, we can affect a turbulence around uh, with a stirring speed of 2000 rpm in a small laboratory batch cell experiment, then everything the existence of mass transfer boundary layer or formation of mass transfer boundary layer can be nullified. So, what will have to happen un under that situation? Now, if I conduct under this low polarization conditions an experiment in a small batch cell using a solute, then uh, so solute of whatever of our interest and conduct the experiment, then we measure the permeate concentration, measure solute concentration in permeate. And we already measured the solute concentration in the fit. So, therefore, observed retention in this particular case will be will be tending to the real retention. So, real retention will be 1 minus C p by C m and under this low polarization conditions everything will be mixed up, existence of mass transfer boundary layer is minimized. So, C m will be approaching to C naught and I will be getting the observed return, retention. So, whatever the retention I will be 
observing in this part, a particular case under this small batch cell experiments in a laboratory setup, small laboratory setup which is highly under our control, the observed retention will be tending to the real retention. Now, this particular conditions, low polarization conditions may not be realizable in an actual industrial scale operation, where the high turbulence you cannot go beyond a particular turbulence in your system, because of the limitation of the flow conditions. So, therefore, uh, and low feed concentration may not be realizable, because in an actual system whatever concentration you have, you have to work with it. And similarly, low transmembrane pressure drop may not be realizable, is not at all realizable in an industrial system, where you are really looking for high throughput or higher transmembrane pressure drop. So, therefore, low polarization conditions can be realizable only in a small laboratory scale under controlled experiment, controlled environment. And if you really conduct an experiment under that controlled environment, then observed retention will be, will be tending to the real retention. So, if you really look into the, you know, compare the value of observed retention and real retention. So, that is how the real retention is measured. And if you look into the value of the observed retention and real retention, as we have described earlier all the time, that the concentration on the membrane surface will be more compared to the concentration in the bulk. So, therefore, C m is greater than C naught. And if you really you know do a ma mathematical manipulation with this relationship between R naught and R r, you can find out that real retention will be always greater than observed retention. So, real retention is basically the actual capacity of the membrane for, se for separating a particular solute or the it, it really represents the actual selectivity of the membrane, but this is not measurable directly. So, directly we can measure in the system performance through observed retention and actual. So, the whatever the retention that we are um, uh, realizing actually the actual retention capability of the membrane is always higher than that. And real retention is basically an intrinsic property of the membrane solute solvent system and it is an uh, integral part of any model equations in order to in order to quantify how much the actual separation of a separation potential of a membrane has in order to separation of a particular solutes. So, therefore, real retention is a very important parameter as far as the modeling of membrane based separation is concerned and we have seen at least one method experimental method to estimate the real retention, real retention of the membrane towards a particular solute and solvent. So, I stop here in this class. In the next class, we will be looking into some more properties of the membrane based uh, systems in order to do a proper justice to the process modeling. Thank you very much.